Greetings students and welcome to another video. So uh, this weekend we're going to get uh, Soul Burning Volcano which is the next legendary duelist set and some cards are going to come out from that set that might do some changes to the current format uh, but I thought but I'm not gonna talk about like the more impactful cards I kind of want to talk about uh, recurring themes uh, that were brought on like from years past and they have been revamped to this year uh, in the TCG and one of them is Volcanic um, for those who don't know uh, Volcanic is pretty much a strategy that revolves around burning and destroying cards uh, periodically using uh, the Blaze Accelerator cards uh, alongside uh, other volcanic monsters uh, as the fodder for the bla uh, blaze accelerators. Um, so before I get to talk about the new cards, I want to give a little brief history of like how the deck did well, uh, like competitively back in the past. Um, so the last level of like relevancy that we had with volcanics was in 2015. Um, so this was around the time Burning Abyss was really popular, uh, right before uh, Necros uh, and Ritual Beast uh, became like two dominant strategies. Well, more so Necros than any other deck, but uh, I mentioned the Ritual Beast because it came out in the same set, uh, Secret Forces. But uh, early 2015, uh, Volcanics was a very respectable, uh, respectable deck, and it's because of this card, uh, Blaze Accelerator Reload. So, um, Back then, the deck was played as a very uh, slow-paced control strategy that focused upon like efficiently trying to resolve a scatter shot as often as possible, blowing up your opponent's board, and burning them like for like fifteen hundred damage like every so often. Uh, you would do that by either banishing or using Blaze Accelerator Reload uh, to discard this as fodder. And at the course of the duel, the main focus was uh, stop your opponent, like blow up their board, and start burning them and poking them bit by bit. Um, Royal Firestorm Guards was important back then because this card would reset back your scatter shots so you can reuse them again um, so what's happened what's the difference between then and now right now uh, the format is way too fast for a deck like this one uh, there are some tools that really make this deck uh, really unfair that we don't have anymore like maxi or vanities or even snatch deal that was pretty good pretty good back in the day that was like one of Konami's uh, fringe decisions that they made uh, during that format um, but yeah like back then uh, Volcanics was a respectable respectable deck because the format was a lot slower um, Summoner Monk was pretty important because it gets you to Volcanic Rocket and Volcanic Rocket got you to your reload and basically that was part of your win condition. Another really cool thing was that back, uh, back then uh, the deck despite it being like a slower paced deck it actually was pretty quick at what it was doing because the reload would draw you uh, a couple of cards and then the shells would just reload back the cards that you would get uh, from uh, the reload you had cards like uh, Reckless Greed that would just draw you into your cards easier, which means if you drew into your scatter shot, you would dump it with reload, etc., etc., etc. So now that we talked about the history of Volcanic and how like it was back then, and pretty much how Power Creep just was a little bit too much for the deck at its current form, 
we can now talk about the new cards that come out that are coming out in uh, in in the legendary duel set. So they gave them two spells, two traps, and three monsters. Um, so TLDR uh, Volcanic Emperor is basically a boss monster. You special summon it by banishing either a Blaze Accelerator or three Volcanic monsters, and you can burn your opponent for each Pyro monster. So basically, this aids to like your initial win condition, which is burning your opponent, uh, like out of the game. It's also a 3100 beater, so like back then, the deck didn't play something like that. Uh, there was an old volcanic monster that you could play, which was the Doomfire. But the problem with Doomfire was that it specifically needed Tri uh, Accelerator, Tri Blaze Accelerator. Um, it needed this. It needed this specific card, and. Uh, that's one other issue for that Volcanic had, like, um, they had a lot of copies of different uh, at Blaze Accelerator cards, but some of them required for you to play other ones, and that wasn't very efficient. So, Doomfire was not a really good boss monster because there was no real way to summon this out. That's where Emperor comes in. Emperor is just a stronger boss monster than Doomfire, and it's easier to summon. Um, it can also uh, set you Volcanic Traps, which back then the only real Volcanic Traps that we had was Recharge. This is not a real Volcanic card. Uh, Konami is going to address that on the next set as well. So this was the only trap, and this wasn't very efficient at what it was supposed to do. Uh, so when we get to talk to it about the other true traps, we can talk about more relevancy when it comes to this effect. But so far, this is a really good card for the art type. Now let's go to the next one, Rimfire. What Rimfire does is you banish, uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this to either A, send a volcanic monster, or B, uh, banish another blaze accelerator to load another one. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, one issue, one thing about volcanics back in the past is like you kind of need a volcanic rocket to get to your blaze accelerator cards. There was no real other efficient way to get to them. So having a monster that kind of gets you to them, uh, like when it's sent to the graveyard, is pretty, pretty cool. Um, one issue is you do already need Blaze Accelerator cards in your, in your graveyard in order for you to load into other ones. So it's not a card that starts your engine at the beginning of the game. It's one that is uh, does it uh, like mid to late game or if you're already like already establishing your cards um, but yeah uh, pretty pretty cool card uh, I like that it can set it, it can place any blaze accelerator even the even the reload trap so uh, that's really really cool on that regard uh, volcanic trooper so what this one does is it adds any volcanic. So it can add you all the monsters. It can add you the trap cards. Sadly, it does not add you the blaze accelerators, um, but that's not a huge issue, especially since we already have Rimfire. Um, the other thing is you discard one card and you put a bomb token to your opponent's board. Um, not sure if Konami's gonna keep this name or not, but um, this is pretty cool because basically uh, your opponent having monsters means that you can use your Blaze Accelerator cards uh, in or, uh, like outside of Reload to just start picking apart your opponent um, and like start establishing advantage with your Blaze, other Blaze Accelerator cards, etc, etc, etc. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's the main reason that effect is in there. 
um, but this effect is really important for other reasons and I'll get to that when I talk about like op options of how you play this deck so that's it for the monsters uh, so far every single monster is pretty much uh, I'm not gonna say in a necessity but they are cards that really help doing what the wind condition of volcanic already is uh, Volcanic Trooper is another starter card besides the Rocket. Uh, Rimfire it can also be a pseudo starter depending on what your, is already in your graveyard or whatever you want to like establish. And Emperor is just a really cool boss monster. Uh, I like the fact that it can summon itself from the graveyard. So if you end up summoning, sending it with something like Rimfire or by other means you can just resummon it. Um, it's pretty pretty cool that way um so now we go to the spell cards uh, I'll talk about the volcanic blaze accelerator um so you activate this by sending blaze accelerator from your hand deck or face off from the field so basically you need the original blaze accelerator to activate this card um, you can only control one of this uh, once per turn. You can special summon a volcanic monster from your hand. And uh, once per turn, you can target one face-up monster, send one pyro monster from your deck to your graveyard, and if you do destroy that monster. That's where Trooper's effect comes in. Trooper by itself can get you to the Blaze Accelerator, but it can also get you to discard like uh, a card to give your opponent a monster so you can use the blaze accelerator's effect um, but we still have another issue the issue is like getting to the blaze accelerator I mean that's not an issue at all this card can dump it never mind uh, also this has volcanic in the name so uh, the trooper can actually add this card to hand so so far the support is not looking that bad basically you you have a starter that's better than Volcanic Rocket. Uh, and that's really, really important because now what you can do is Trooper discard, uh, add this, discard a card, use this effect, send the Rimfire, and since Blaze Accelerator is going to be in your graveyard by the activation of this, you can banish it to just put Reload uh, onto the board. So this card is already better than rock uh, than than the rocket, uh, which is something that that's really cool for this deck. Um, let's talk about the next card, fire ejection. Um, send one power monster from your deck to your graveyard. Then if it's a volcanic monster, then you can apply these effects, inflict damage to your opponent, or summon a bomb token. Um, this card is okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like the most important card in the deck. However, this does send you the Rimfire, and the Rimfire can add uh, can send another volcanic. So this card can start g g generating an advantage that way. Another thing about this card, it, it also gives your opponent a token. So it also helps with the activation of your Blaze Accelerator. Um. So. Uh, whether or not this card is a necessity, it pretty much comes down to deck building. However, uh, as far as supporting the theme goes, this is a welcoming card for them. Um, so let's talk about emission. After one of these effects, take one volcanic kind of monster from your deck, either add it to your hand or special summon it, ignoring the summoning conditions. Second effect, target one power monster on the field, uh, inflict damage to your opponent. If you target a monster you control, the damage is halved. Um, so, one really cool thing about this card is that this card can summon the Doomfire. So now you can play Doomfire without the need of Tri Blaze Accelerator, which is something pretty neat. Um, sadly, you can only do it from the deck. So if you do end up milling or like losing the Doomfire, uh, it won't be summoned by uh, this way. Uh, another really cool thing is, I mean, this is another burn card, and it's searchable, so um, this deck's win condition is pretty much burning your opponent, so if there is a little bit of surplus in life where you just fell short into like 
taking the necessary damage to inflict to your opponent, uh, a mission can do that for you. And, and, it's a, and it is a searchable card by a Volcanic Trooper. Uh, the last card, Volcanic Inferno. When your opponent activates a monster fell on the, on the field, you can banish one Pyro monster from your graveyard, inflict 500 damage to your opponent, then if you banish a Volcanic monster uh, during your opponent's end phase, you can target up to two Volcanic monsters that are banished in your graveyard, placing them to the bottom of the deck at any order. Sadly, it does not say three. Um, then. Uh, one thing that was important back then was the importance of this card or of Firestorm cards because the win condition revolved around recycling Scattershot and this card is very very close to what it needs to do however one it's during the opponent's end phase and two it does not recover three cards so if you end up doing the Scattershot interaction you won't be able to recycle all copies of them um, so, like, I'd say this card is fine because of the negation effect. Like, the negation effect gives it a, 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 a piece of value. Um, however, I feel like out of the, all the new cards from the set, this is like the weakest one. Um, now, so... Since we read the new cards and we saw like how volcanics should be played, um, like what are possible viable strategies for it? Because as we already established, the format is just way too fast for a slow paced uh, strategy like this one. Uh, you can make it work, like we do have product prosperity in the game. For example, and that's like a card that feeds consistency on this uh, on this archetype, and this deck doesn't really need the extra deck at least for its main win condition, so uh, you can pull it off uh, to some regard. Uh, I think Magic Planter is not as good as Prosperity. However, Prosperity can conflict with Reload. That is one thing to take note of. Um, so that's like one other. That's one one option. You would have to play like other cards, like other floodgates. I don't think a reckless greed would be played anymore. Wildfire is a good option. Uh, I think wildfire needs any blaze accelerator. It does. So it actually works with uh, the volcanic theme the way it works right now. However, the, there are other possibilities. Uh, Shadows to Lithium, he did um, he did a video showcasing Sprite and the Horus cards. Uh, the, the reason the Sprite cards are cool in this deck is because you do have two cards that summon monsters to your opponent's board, which means they both serve as cards that trigger Mannequin Cat. And Mannequin Cat is cool because Mannequin Cat can summon you uh, like your other Volcanic cards, like your Rocket or your Trooper and it can start out your place like that way uh also not mentioning that the sprite monsters are still like really really strong um konami has not hit them hard enough so it is a viable strategy that you can mix alongside this um so another option uh, that, uh, that, that I thought about was Tear Lament. So, a lot of, uh, a couple of these uh, volcanic cards do have graveyard effects. Like the Rimfire, if it's into a graveyard, it triggers. Um, the volcanic shells can grab you more copies if they're milled as well. And like Blaze Accelerator Reload. Um, Blaze Accelerator Reload is, has also a graveyard effect, so just milling all of those cards uh, can be beneficial for you. Uh, the one downside uh, to be playing with Tillament uh, is that the mills are random, so you don't know what cards can be milled before others, which means that there might be a fail sequence. However, like I think it's not going to be like the biggest issue of the world. 
Uh, another really cool thing is if you do end up playing the two element route, you can play uh, the Ichizu cards. And you do have two Ichizu monsters that serve as like cards that can uh, recur back cards from your graveyard. Um, so this fulfills the condition of like the Royal Firestorm guards. Um, which is something that you were doing back then when it came to like uh, the volcanic cards. It also fills the spot for like slow cards like the um, um, the Inferno. Um, also the other Shizu cards are just cards that help you mill cards as well. So this also can serve as fodder for the volcanic cards. Um, another thing that I thought about was Gem Knight. Um, so the reason I thought about Gem Knights was one, uh, you have cards that summon card summon monsters to your opponent's board, which means that that immediately gives you access to quartz and a uh, scatter fusion, so which are cards that rely on your opponent uh, having monsters in order for those cards to be functional. But more importantly, uh, you do have Gen Knight monsters that can be summoned with Pyro monsters as materials, like Citrine, which means that Scatter Fusion can send uh, the Volcanic cards, like the Rimfire and like uh, the Shell, and you can start like as uh, starting your engine uh, on that way. Another thing to note is that Gem Knights have a win condition that involves burning life points to your opponent. Um, so this helps Volcanic uh, like get closer and closer to their win condition. Um, so like I'm not a fan of FTK strategies. However, uh, this is like one concept that like is themed to what the archetype is supposed to do. So I am not opposed uh, to like this line of thinking or this line of playing this uh, deck uh, as long as it's consistent at what it does. Uh, we do have like enough hand traps in the game and cards like to stop like what this strategy wants to do. So I feel like just having a themed like win condition as an FTK is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, another card I guess I want to talk about is, um, let's see if I can find it. Um, let's see if I can find it. It should be here somewhere. Let's see if I can write Possessed. There we go. Uh, Awakening of the Possessed, uh, Great Inari. So, uh, I guess this card is a non-rollable mention because um, you can summon it uh, just by having any volcanic monster and relinquished anima, which is a spellcaster monster. And this card can get you to um, the Spiritual Fire Art. Which is another card that also burns your opponent. So, again, this is just another win condition for the deck. Um, yeah, like, I think that's it. I think I pretty much covered almost everything. Um, like, I would suggest not sleeping on these cards, um, like, the meta game is in a point where this deck is not going to be, like, super top tier or anything, however, uh, last time Volcanic got support was when Blaze Accelerator came out, and, like, shoutouts to Sok, uh, Sahab, uh, Sorabi, uh, he pretty much went undefeated in Swiss, 10 rounds, on a YCS, playing a deck similar to this, 
uh, because people just didn't know what these cards did. Uh, whether or not we'll see a repeat of that uh, is very, very soon to tell. However, um, when it comes to like text and strategies, it's very important to just learn about them uh, before it's too late and like somebody just starts FTKing out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. I hope you found this video very, very informative. I, found, I hope you found this to your liking. Uh, keep practicing and keep dueling. More uh, legendary duelist content coming soon, hopefully.